It's Boomer Esiason had an interesting theory on what's going on with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets because they've been horrible. And man, he's saying Aaron Rodgers has kind of just slucked the life, out, all the air out of the building. Let's hear from Boomer Esiason. I hate to say it, man. It's like Aaron Rodgers has completely sucked the air out of the building. And I think so many guys are deferring to who he is in their minds. And in their minds and in my mind, he is a first ballot Hall of Fame player. One of the great quarterbacks when he was in his prime that we have ever seen. Very few people throw the ball like him. And I used to say that Dan Marino, Joe Namath, and Aaron Rodgers all threw the ball significantly different than everybody else. Like, we've never seen anything like it. And I, will, and I will go to my grave still thinking that those three players were that special when they were throwing the ball and how they looked at throwing it was just so natural and amazing. But, you know, since he has come here over the last two years, every player on this team, I feel like, has deferred everything to him. And the reason I say that is because Russell Wilson said something about Mike Williams yesterday, and it was being reported during the game that when Mike Williams showed up to Pittsburgh, he showed up with such a big smile, and he was so happy like he was so unencumbered by playing for the Jets and with the Jets and mm. with Aaron Rodgers that he makes the game-winning touchdown catch over his left shoulder in an amazing series sequence of events because the reason he's on the field is because a guy that would have been out there on the field gets hurt on the previous play, and that's the only reason he's out there. And Russell Wilson has the confidence to throw him the football, and it was a game-winning touchdown pass. And what Russell was talking about, Mike Williams, basically gives you a – Real perspective of what's going on in that locker room over there for the Jets. Boomer Esiason, I think, is on to something here. You can be too smart. I, I don't, this is not a harsh criticism of Aaron Rodgers, but it, it's just reality. When you're the smartest guy in the room and everybody knows it, and then everybody lives in fear of being corrected by you. Or, or just your energy can suck the life and put an edge uh, in the room that, uh, that, that generally needs to come from a head coach, not a player. When the coach walks in the building, I can remember, I didn't even like our head coach, Paul Shadell, when I was a player, but when he would walk into a room, we'd be on edge and like, oh, the coach is here, let me straighten up and I don't want to say something stupid or blah, blah, blah. That's great from a head coach. I'm sure that's what it felt like playing for Belichick. But when you're a player and a teammate, wonk, wonk, wonk. when you walk in the room and the energy goes down because now there's an edge, oh my God. And, and that's where I think Tom Brady kind of excelled. He seemed to be the kind of guy when he walked into the room, teammates lit up rather than like, oh my God, daddy's home. Now I better be on my best behavior. I think Boomer Esiason's on to something. Jason, people forget Boomer, or his parents probably called him Norman Esiason. People forget his last couple of years, I think at least two were with the New York Jets, and then he ended up with the Cardinals. I wonder, does he have sources in that organization feeding him some of this stuff? Hey, look, we all use sources, and he's been in the locker room. He was a very good quarterback in his own right. He might be on to something. Look, Aaron Rodgers is the type of personality that when he's elite and he's great, it's a quirk. You love it. You love that idiosyncratic way he does it. But when he's not good and it's obviously diminished production, it's an issue. The reality is this in life. You will take all the quirks and the idiosyncratic uh, blowback if you're getting something out of it. They're not getting anything out of it. This team is dead, Jason. I've watched them against the Cardinals. They have no life. And not all of it is his fault. That offensive line is bad. But Aaron Rodgers is the type of guy, if you don't enjoy him because he's not winning football games for you, he can come off as smug. And when you make and when you make the decision not to come to these offseason camps that are mandatory because you want to go out on a retreat, a year after not playing more than three snaps, that's going to be an issue. And there's probably is resentment because there may be guys in that locker room who actually like Coach Sala. And if you're the main reason why he's not there anymore, guess what? You don't like Aaron Rodgers that much anymore. So I, I, I do agree with you. I think Boomer is probably onto something here. Let's be honest. The insurance model is broken. 
CrowdHealth puts your health care back in your hands. Use the promo code FEARLESS at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, promo code FEARLESS. I think you make an excellent point about the energy of the room with the quarterbacks. I was around a few. Uh, a guy that sort of embodied what you're talking about was Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford was very weird in St. Louis, and he was, I mean, he was unbelievable arm. One of the best arms, I think, uh, in the NFL during his time was up there with throwing the best deep ball. The guy went home every weekend to see his girlfriend in Oklahoma. He was never one of the guys. He'd sort of come around. Nobody even knew Sam Bradford, and he was just kind of weird. You know, he'd come in. He would lift a million pounds. He was farm boy strong. It was very weird for a quarterback. He would hardly talk to anybody. And then he'd go back home to Oklahoma. And you notice the Rams sucked every year that he was there forever, regardless of the talent. That talent overcame it when he was at Oklahoma, and he was Heisman Trophy winner. Beyond that, it didn't work. Tom Brady, he was kind of a dork. He wasn't funny, but he was always joking around with the guys. And so that sort of energy, it works. You have to be one of the guys, the quarterback. You can't be a separate sort of figure. The other thing I think Steve's onto here is, uh, he's always been a guy, Aaron, that goes against the coaches and thinks his way is the better way. When you start losing, a lot of guys start looking around and start thinking, hey, maybe we should try coach's way because your way's not working. I wanted to see this work. I really did. I really wanted Aaron Rodgers to work here. I wanted the Jets to be good this year. I thought with their schedule they had a chance to really – pull this thing in when they got Devontae in that trade. I thought it was going to rejuvenate and gel this whole thing together, and it just hasn't. Tom Brady's success to me was because of Belichick and the combination of that. I'm not sure that we can totally blame Aaron Rodgers here for the way that the, the team and, and everybody's looking at him. I think that's the lack of strength in coaching, which Belichick, Belichick gave Brady. And if you're not outworking everybody, and Steve mentioned, you know, earlier in the year not coming to some of the practices and not being there, if you're not outworking everybody, this kind of attitude runs out quick, and I think that's what's happening. I, that's what's happening. I, I hate to see it, though. I wanted it to work. I, I, I'm, this issue, uh, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm comparing myself to Aaron Rodgers, but I am, but it, it's it's. It's why I'm so quiet and I don't talk uh, that much. It's why I'm a bit of an introvert because I think when I talk too much uh, off camera or whatever, I can be that guy that can suck the air out of a room. And, and, and particularly if you're, uh, for someone like me with conservative biblical values, and, and uh, a lot of your friend and family base uh, is liberal and, and think they have Christian values, it's just better for me to shut up than to constantly be correcting people. And, and because next thing you know, everybody's on edge. I may say something that Jason disagrees with, and then he's going to correct me, and he may quote scripture and walk you through the logic of how silly you are, and, and so I tend just to shut up. Uh, and, and, and so I know exactly. And, w and when you're that guy and you're, uh, uh, when you're that guy and you have the Matt LaFleur, you've kind of emasculated him as the head coach. Salah, you've kind of emasculated because you're smarter than him and, and you're letting everybody know. And that's why, you know, Leaders sometimes are, are like, hey, I recognize the talent, but I have an overall vision. And this is somewhat like if I think about what put me at odds with some people at uh, Fox Sports and even ESPN, because I, I would be the guy like, no, nah, this ain't the way. You know, embrace debate, that's stupid. Let me show you what's better conversation. And then I went out and did it and proved it. And instead of people being like, hey, this is great. They were like, no, man, you've just eviscerated my whole approach <laughs> uh, uh, to doing things, and I can't get on board with it. So it, it, it's, I, I get what Boomer Esiason is talking about here. I think there's a lot of truth to it. Steve, I got to make some room for uh, Joel Klatt, so I got to let you go. I'll give you a final thought, uh, but I got to make some room yeah. for Joel Klatt, so we got to bounce. 
I'll make this 30 seconds to TJ's point. I'm a firm believer that the quarterback, because of what they get paid and their role on a franchise is the face of it. You have to be first one in, last one out, and nobody has to be more engaged and harder working. I'm not so sure that is truly the ethos of Aaron Rodgers, the way it was with Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, or any real franchise quarterback we've seen the last 20 years. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, as soon as he started to become a pop culture figure and a celebrity, um, he started to veer off from really just being a football player. And I'm old fashioned. I just want my quarterbacks to be the franchise quarterback. That's it. Well, that, that is the. Thank you, Steve. You can bounce. Go that's ahead. The, the last thing about this, Jason, too, that you, you, everybody who's ever played with a guy who's not all in feels it. And are these guys looking around and they're like, Aaron, we suck. And it, you might be the reason why. That you didn't show up to anything, you're not that interested, you're talking about running for vice president, you're going on the Joe Rogan podcast. Do you even want to play football? Because if not, we'll take the less talented guy that actually wants to be here. That's an easy way to get your team to turn on you. I, I, I'm not sure if they've turned on him, but I'm also not sure. But I do think they will turn on him, and they're probably at that point. I, I think initially, and for the first five, six weeks of the season, even through the coach firing, they were like, hey, man, we got one of the most talented quarterbacks of all time. There's just a lot of excitement and optimism. I think right now they're at that point where they're like, man, uh, this guy, you know, who uh, thinks he's smarter than everybody and, you know, points out mistakes receivers have made. Didn't he call out one of the receivers early in the season yep. that made a mistake? And, and then it's like, uh, okay. Cadence, calling out the cadence thing. Yes, yeah. the cadence thing. You're ex exactly right. And, and so now here we are at two and seven or whatever we are, and we're, about, we're not going to win anything. Now you're at the point where like, okay, we've been sold a bill of goods. This guy wasn't all in. This guy thinks he's smarter than everyone else and has corrected everyone. And he's obviously now with their interim coach. And this is why probably firing Salah was a mistake is because if you think he had emasculated Salah, <laughs> what do you think he does to an interim coach? Yes. Uh, it, it's like, holy cow, that this, you know, everybody's looking over their shoulder and Aaron, what should we do? You're, you're the, this organization sucks, we've always sucked, you're the only one that's ever had any success. What should we, and now we got this interim coach, his, who knows what his resume is. It, it's, it's... Brees Hall. Brees, Bo Boomer's on to something here. Go ahead. I just, Brees Hall was one of the best running backs in the league last year. And th like these guys are all looking around, they're like, we have pieces to build on. Everybody knows Devontae Adams is really good. Everybody knows Brees Hall is really good. A lot of people think he's the second best back in the league behind Christian McCaffrey. And so guys start looking around and they're going, Someone called Saquon Barkley, but go who just jumped backwards over somebody, but go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, point is, I think guys are looking around. Th these th this is the worst place you can possibly be as a team. Guys are privately having conversations about Aaron Rodgers being the problem. Before Joel jumps on here, and obviously if he comes in, I'll, no, I'll he, shut up. We're, we're, you're going to have to shut up because I need to do a live read and go, but be quick. I <laughs> just want to say, what other billion-dollar corporation, what other billion-dollar industry sets up their business to be run where one person can control the complete destiny of that organization year in and year out? It makes no sense that these that the NFL and these teams put every piece of stock in the quarterback. I just think it's the wrong way to run an organization that that one person should have that much control. Mm. I have to think about that as it relates to any other organization. Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with our latest content.